So thank you for your presentation and congratulations. Thank you. Sandra will bring the last uh, uh, speaker. Wilbur, th uh, thank you. A uh, round of applause. So let's go back with uh, um, Fabio Moraes, uh, a researcher in of, uh, the security of the Internet of Things, and I'm going to say it in, in English. Could you please come uh, to the rostrum? Is Vou fazer minha apresentação em português. Então, boa tarde para quem. I'm going to give uh, the uh, my talk uh, in uh, Portuguese. So good uh, afternoon for everyone. I'm Savio Morales, and I am uh, a professor of uh, and the National Institute of. Uh, um, and today I want to tell you about a research that was uh, that we conducted in Rio de Janeiro at the LAPNEC, that is a, a, a laboratory of a, a research laboratory. And as a result of uh, our studies, we um, here we uh, conducted all this work, and uh, my and. Uh, my, this, what I'm going to show today, is a solution for rapid and collective uh, responses. So, um, for uh, security incidents, botnets, malwares, in a context of the Internet of Things. I imagine that you must be much more aware of this than other people. Since here, we are speaking with Internet providers. so. This proposal, I don't know how to make the slides go. So the presentation is in English, but I'll continue to speak Portuguese. The idea of the proposal is based on the concern that usually the Internet of Things devices are typically suffer attacks, only that for the end user, for you at home, it's very difficult to realize it, and sometimes uh, the people realize and they are not worried about the attacks because maybe uh, it took the light, uh, the lamps uh, half a second to turn on, so I won't worry. So in spite of the small impact that one of these devices may produce in the end user, and even a DDoS uh, attack, uh, the, this will cause just a small uh, problem. We saw a lot of concern about this topic, that the collect, uh, but the collective attacks produce uh, s very serious problems. So as a community, we need to respond to this, but it takes an endless amount of time because the problem is still there. The hour worry with this proposal is to speed up uh, these responses to security incidents. So when we see problems like this, situations like this in the corporate world, we think of using classical solutions uh, of uh, IDS, uh, IPS. What are the problems in the domestic networks? You can't go there and adjust uh, and tune up uh, the rules, uh, and um, you can't adjust this manually, depending on the topology of the network uh, devices that are uh, connected there. And in the case of the I IPS ideas that are detected detected based on anomalies, they, uh, it's very difficult to put that in a CPE or to put uh, some device in the network of the end user because it's very high cost or you send that um, processing out and you're exposing the private, uh, uh, the privacy of the end users or you need a specific device and that's not very good. There's a typo uh, error there. I'm going to ask them to replace this, uh, uh, the RFC, it should be 8520 manufacturer using description, and it defines very interesting tools. It's a very uh, focused on uh, the Internet of Things, but it has security resources that are very interesting. This will be more for the uh, purpose of uh, the uh, presentation than for the ex for the explanation. We, let's go to the slide that shows what uh, this. Uh, 
what, uh, how we can create these tools. You can create a communication map of each of the devices connected, including the communication of the internet to, to the network and uh, external connection with the host uh, in the internet. And that is a very positive thing because on the one hand, we can block everything that is not under the scope of what you would expect for that device or that appliance, and the network will know this. This is a process defined in the RFC, but uh, um, uh, simplifying it, you have to inform the CPE, the communication that you expect that is implemented, and what are the communications with which host and with using which protocol you're going to communicate, and then you can block everything, and you can also obtain this general overview of everything in the network to identify potential vulnerabilities. So what problem does this have? It doesn't solve the problem entirely, and we still depend on the vendor because this description of the traffic is provided by the vendor. If the vendor discontinues producing these devices, once you have a vulnerability, you will be unable to mitigate that vulnerability. That depends on the vendor. So let us go back again. So we propose the Ensure Internet Network Exposure Analyzer Utility is a tool to simplify the process of identification and classification of potential vulnerabilities. We still will be able to guarantee privacy. So, so it will enable third party support. If you have a security team that is following up uh, the vulnerabilities, as was shown by Francisco a while ago, if you have ISPs that hire these services to provide to their clients in the services or as an additional service, you can have that collective protection and then reduce the traffic used for doing DDoS attacks. In theory, considering that this will become an RFC and this will be obtained at a very low cost, namely to provide a collective solution to the end users. This will benefit not only the users, but also will benefit you. So when you share knowledge on the attacks that we already know, we already had several presentations of situations where we map the vulnerabilities. I know the image is not uh, is a bit busy. Remember the image I saw you before of the communications map with all the connected devices and how they communicate. This is at tier three and tier four. So here we have all the information. Here we have the information. Here at the SOC, you have what the client hired. This is the INGSO. And what is offered as an added service to the client. So this describes all the attacks that occur in that region that were detected or some new vulnerability in the devices that it knows that the clients have. For example, a camera of a given vendor, a tea box from another vendor, then another vulnerability came up. You see the signature of that malware in order to block it. So in the network, we're going to take this communications graph of all the communications in the network and compare it with the signatures that were inside the network in order to identify the vulnerabilities. So we define uh, data model for following the same principle of the SNORT and the SURICA. We have some additional resources that are more specific for situations of IoT inspired on the data models used by MUD and we use the network signatures at the transport level of these attacks, we also create a series of conditions so that that exposure to vulnerabilities 
becomes a specific risk because scanning in itself will not be a risk. You can allow it to scan. Now, if we come from Mirai, if you're going to scan the possibility of infecting communication and command and control, there is a very high risk of something happening. So in some set of rules, you can take certain actions or different actions. I cannot go into the details, but this is available and you can find me during the meeting and I can explain this in greater detail. So we have all this information. We have the signature. This is a big summary of the data model. It's not very friendly to view from where you're seated, but we classify in a differential way the classification of the attack, specific vulnerabilities. In general, you have a person doing the attack from outside the network towards the internal network, to the local network of your user. Sometimes this simple exposure of just a few communications already poses a risk of addressing to, that will lead to blocking and some additional complexity when we describe malwares, which in addition to the attack traffic, we have operations attack, uh, operations traffic, he cracks himself, because this is related to malware. So we'll have the command and control of the botnet depending on when it considers that this was attack or scanning or a non-attack. In that malware context, you will have all these categories of traffic and consider the context information so as to make a decision to block. So coming back to that situation, we have a network, we have all these communications, we have this information. This will reach into together with the descriptions, uh, description of the malicious traffic. We will then consider each communication of that graph with each node, with each protocol, and compare this with the signature of these fields. Here we will have two steps. The first step is to compare origin and destination of the communication at network level, an ISP, the protocol used, if it's ICMP, UDP, or TCP, or any of the three. You can compare who, which was the initiator, the TCP initiator, and if this is a transport header, source and destination ports are compared in the case of ICMP, header, the type and code. When all these fields coincide between the signature and the communication defined by the MUT, you will store the information. And in the end, for each device and for each attack, you will conduct this analysis of the threat to which the device is exposed. So each of these types of exposure is associated to a given risk. We will then add this. So each attack or each malware will have a risk threshold that might be affected. So you have to have an alert threshold. If you exceed that threshold, you conduct a second assessment. In the case of isolated vulnerabilities, you directly block this. In the case of malware, you define critical ACL sets which are the access control list, which is what we use to describe these lists. Once we have this control, we will block the attack, the traffic, or even block everything. These are the actions that we can take in terms of operations. So when we conduct all this analysis, we identify potential exposure. This has been adapted to have a visual reference. Traffic can be monitored to see if it's malicious traffic. We conducted some tests during that research in the awareness that MUD would provide protection. We compared an unprotected network with another protected with MUD and one with INGSU. 
under the action of a variant that we prepared in a laboratory. So we conducted the test in some scenarios. We had very interesting results. This slide shows DDoS attacks, infected IoT, and the packets that were generated. We see that there are some scenarios in which the MUD still allows generating some traffic, but almost nothing is transmitted. So with Inchu, there's no generation or transmission of data. If we have data generation, it might occur that the rule will allow the passing. Although MUD provides protection, there is space for some kind of attack or exfiltration of data. So we will understand why this occurred. In this slide, we see the in vitro test with a Mirai variant. This, uh, this is a new scanning that was carried out, and the nodes that had communications and command and control. MUD has some scenarios with a reasonable number of nodes that manage to connect with command and control. This can be useful for binary update or other changes. Ingsu blocks absolutely everything. This was a test that we called in vitro test. It was a specific situation, an isolated situation, but can be exploited. This compares the specific gain, uh, or the relative gain of issue over mud. For example, controllability of the bots, less bots, could be controlled by the botnet if they were protected with Ingsu. In other cases, we had no With the infected node, when the infected node was external, it didn't allow communication with the device. On the net, which is exploited, this is not the case. MUD had already provided the protection, so it blocks the entire communication. There was no infection in this case. So what do we have today? This proposal exists. It is rolling in the IETF. It is being discussed in the uh, top. The validation period expires on March the 26th. So I will make an update of this. I'm going to glue this to AWG, which is from MUDCAM. That is a working group that is also working in the fight against DDoS. In IETF, this is what is happening in the academia. We're also working on this. We have collaboration with several universities. We have collaboration with the University of The Hague, with Rio de Janeiro, with Bremen. We're working on this in order to continue developing this in INSHU. Now, we do have the need of conducting tests in a real scenario, deploying real IoT devices with a client. So we need to have these situations. We also need to have the provider experience. I have a corporate network, and I do not have the same experience compared to those who work directly with the clients. We are also working in a collaborative way in order to maintain privacy on the identification and creation of the signature of new bot malwares, mining of cryptocurrency or botnets, etc. There are many activities in progress. The idea is to improve issue. We're even working, we're working at the level of the transport layer. 
Now, if your network has no protection against IP spoofing and uh, there's a DNS attack, uh, you still that uh, well that attack will succeed because we can't block all of the DNS connections. All the device won't work. So we have those possibilities for growth, uh, for um, advance, uh, and uh, by uh, working and um, um, uh, sometime having a mob working and uh, in the future we I can present a new proposal to explain um, uh, how MAD ex uh, works. It's a very important tool but it has not been completely deployed not even in the domestic routes and not even in the devices and we need to press as LACNIC as with together with a group of people and with uh, our customers bottom up we need to um, exert pressure both on the IoT um, appliances vendors and um, the ETS uh, um, uh, vendors. So this is a proposal, this is a solution that we propose in Latin America, that is we reduce the uh, English barrier. For instance, if you want to speak English, I understand English, but if you want to speak uh, Spanish, I understand it too. And if you want to speak Portuguese, we speak the same language. So we are trying to have a global use uh, solution, but based on our experience. So please feel absolutely free to ask any questions or comments, and we're going to try to make this work if you believe in this solution. There you have my contact info. The information will be available. You can take a picture of um, my contact data or look for me in the corridor. Thank you. Well, thank you. That was a very good uh, presentation. And now, the last questions today. Let's see what do we have online. If there are no more questions, Savio, thank you. A round of applause for Savio.